I have far too many Geiger counters. Someone asked a question in one of my recent videos about what would be the cheapest uh, Geiger counter to have, little portable Geiger counter that you would be able to use for normal everyday use uh, and then would also be suitable in a crisis situation. So uh, a nuclear incident involving a nuclear power station meltdown, um, you know, i.e. Chernobyl, or uh, if there was a nuclear war. Uh, the thing about that question is there are so many different makes and models of Geiger counter and there are so many variations of those makes and models that it boils down to one thing. Obviously, you're, the, they're, they are very price dependent. You do get what you pay for. There are very, very few meters that do a dual role, as in they will do normal everyday background. They will measure all types of ionizing radiation. Uh, and they will then they will also be suitable in a you know in a crisis. 120 pounds is usually the amount that I would say you would need to spend. Unfortunately, some of the meters here sell for a lot more than that, and you you know that's the that's the problem. Um, the best meter in here is the Rotem Ram Genie. Uh, second hand, you'll pick one of these up for 250 to 300. Brand new, they're over a thousand. Uh, this is a proper professional grade Geiger counter uh, rate meter contamination meter during a, a you know an incident. This is what I'd be trusting, uh, but that is out of the realm of some people's finances to get one of these. I got very very lucky on you on eBay, and that's how I managed to get this. So I will take this one out of the way because really, it's. You know, for what we're talking about, this doesn't need to be here. Right, then we've got something like this, uh, which is the FH40. Now, this is gamma only. So for everyday use, it's not very practical. Uh, yes, it does give you background readings. Uh, but during a nuclear war, this would not give you uh, beta contamination. Uh, this will tell you ionizing radiation. It will tell you what the gamma is, but it won't tell you if uh, you know if you've got beta contamination on your clothing. So for that again, I would take this out of the equation. Uh, you'll pick one of these up for about hundred pounds though, and they are a nice meter. You can get different probes for them. So this will detect alpha, beta, and gamma if you can get the probe. But the probe, I, I just I don't see them come up for sale, and. Uh, knowing a friend who has another German manufactured meter uh, that does take the same probe, the meter will set you back probably three times as much as you know buying one of these second hand. So yeah, probes, far too expensive. Cable as well, far too expensive. So that brings you into then, do you go old or do you go new? So the Rattler 50. Rattler 50 is good for background radiation. It's good up to uh, 50 millironcan. So again, it, you know, and it does alpha and does beta and does gamma. So it's one of those things, do you buy this along with another meter? So do you buy a low range meter that gives you everyday use for you know being able to use something? So something like the Pripyat, you know, do you buy one of those that does beta, does gamma, and it also is giving you background readings? Do you buy something that gives you background and then slightly higher ratings and get them cheap and then top it off with the, you know, SHTF Geiger counter. So something like the PDRM you'll pick up for £30 and you'll only use that in an emergency, a massive emergency where if you see any readings on this at all, you need to be worried. <laughs> I really, really, really like this meter. Now, obviously, it does uh, alpha, beta, and gamma. Uh, the radius scan is probably quite expensive, and there are certain drawbacks with it. The battery life isn't that good. The screen, I don't know why they went for an OLED screen. It's a very, very strange choice. It's a really nice-looking screen, but again, 
it affects the service life of the unit because the screen eventually will die, which is madness. And the batteries, I find, don't last that long. So you'll need a big supply of AAA batteries for it. Uh, in regards to the therapy, I've had this therapy on now for about six months and the batteries are still full. And it's on all the time. And now, okay, it's on standby, but it is still on all the time taking background readings. And, you know, it is counting in the background, uh, counting up the, the dose of everything I have in this shed. Yes, I like the radio scan. Um, but again, it's another unit which is slightly too expensive for most people. Uh, you know, 200, 250 pounds in the UK. Yeah, slightly too expensive. So that now brings us down to, I think, meters, the sort of the old Chernobyl meters, as I call them. You can pick these up for anywhere between 20 right up to 100 pounds. Uh, ELAT is too difficult to use. The bare egg is pointless, really. Uh, and that leaves you with these. The azimuth, really, really simple. I actually quite like the azimuth. I think it's, it's quite, the way they made it work is quite bizarre, but I still like it. Would I use it during a, you know everyday sort of use? No, probably not. So that leaves these four. Uh, Jupiter, yes, I like it. Very, very simple, very straightforward. Uh, measures up to, I think it was 25 microsievert. Pretty good. Uh, yeah, the Pripyat, the problem with the Pripyat is, I mean, I, I turned this on about half an hour ago just to let it warm up. That's the problem with these now. They're starting to fail. Bella. Yeah, I really like the Bella, and the Bella works, and it works well. So if I could get a cheap Bella, I would have a cheap Bella. That would be, yeah, definitely get one of these. Um, Pripyat, no, probably not. Out of all four of these, this is okay, but again, it only measures up to 10 microsievert. So could you use that as every day? If you got one of these for ten pounds or something, yeah, maybe. But again, it's they're old, and the problem with old technology is it will eventually fail on you when you need it most. Um, out of all of them, this is the one that's been the most reliable. The Bella and the Jupiter have been the most reliable. The Pripyat is not reliable. Uh, so if you could if you could pick up a Bella or a, a Jupiter, yes, I would probably go for one of these. This, yeah, too many problems with it to rely on. So if you want to go old and you want to go cheap, one of these. You pick these up for, you know, less than £60 on a good day. Then we're back into things like the uh, the Rad Alert. You pick one of these up, hopefully for 100 less than 100 and uh, it will do the job for you. And that's where it always falls back to. It always seems to fall back to the GQ and the GMC series of meters. This is a GMC 500 Plus. It's built well and it has nice software, but they've used cheap components. Can you trust this to be giving you the correct reading? And, you know, will anything else go wrong with it? I think the good thing about these is this, I think, was 117 pounds. You can get a fully working GMC for about 68 pounds on Amazon UK. And honestly, if I wanted to go cheap and I wanted something that measured low range, everyday background, and yeah, there's something definitely wrong, I honestly can't see you going wrong. They're cheap enough that if it does eventually break, you won't be too annoyed. I mean, if you went out and spent £250 on this, got it imported from Russia, and it broke after a year, you would be really, really, really annoyed. If you spent... 68 pounds on this and it broke maybe after a year or two yes you'd still be a bit annoyed but you know you're not going to be crying in your sleep you know into your into your cereal in the morning over it is probably the best little package you could have keep this safe somewhere with a with three uh c cell batteries just on standby and then have this either if it's the wi-fi one have it running all the time plugged in all the time 
giving you uh, readings or have it turned off with the batteries ready to go you know keep it charged obviously you know meters like this I'm not going to count in um, the old civil defense meters again they are pretty good the victory meters but are you going to be getting accurate readings with them uh, again with the thermoscientific yes they're good for uh, contamination but during a nuclear war to actually tell you what you're being exposed to no not really these will tell you what you're being exposed to uh, yes you can go out and make your own little rate meter but uh, again would I would I you know put my life on the line with one of these no uh, and the same is it goes for all of these meters no I would not be putting my life on the line with all of these so uh, yeah I think if you're looking for something cheap and cheerful and something that works go for the GQ GMC range go for the cheaper ones because if something goes wrong with them it's not a big deal to replace them and try to get your hands on uh, on the PDR M82 because if things go bad this is going to tell you how bad things are so hopefully you find that interesting uh, I obviously have more old military Geiger counters and things like that there but really for home personal use people are looking for things that are cheap and that just work and uh, yeah hopefully some of you will be able to uh, base your purchases on what I've talked about here but listen folks as always thank you very very much for watching and I'll see you all again next time bye bye